Hello VC, Vinyl Community. So this is my introduction video and uh, probably would not have dared to do it a couple of days ago um, simply because, uh, well, I've never recorded anything in English before. This is the very first time. Um, I've always liked English and I've always studied English, but actually more in a passive way. So as you can hear, um, I'm quite lacking the, the exercise in, in, in speaking. And, uh, but I saw, for example, a video by Diane that she made a couple of days ago. And, uh, well, she's an artist from Germany. And uh, it kind of, yeah, it paved a way for me because it showed me that uh, I can actually dare to do that. And I certainly hope I can get away with it. So, uh, well, the other thing is that uh, I have watched uh, VC videos for quite a while now and I was always pretty impressed with these uh, walls of vinyl behind many of the presenters. I never possessed that big amounts of vinyl, but uh, I've always uh, collected vinyl since actually the mid 80s, I think. I actually remember what my very first record was. It was uh, pictures at an exhibition by Emerslake and Palmer. I actually bicycled um, into another town to buy it in a store there. Uh, I was like maybe 14, maybe 15. And um, actually I don't have it anymore. This is one of the very few vinyls that got stolen from me. But it's long ago. However, so um, I've always I've, I've, I've always been looking for interesting and sometimes peculiar stuff and uh, um, didn't really uh, limit myself to a uh, close circle of musical style and taste. So maybe I can contribute something, maybe I can offer one or two interesting products. Um, so um, I have chosen just some of them. I don't want. I don't want to make it too long now. Um, but there is no. There is no structure or pattern behind it. Only that I picked um, like two albums and one or two EPs and two 12 inches and even I think one or two singles. And also, I actually have a rather intriguing collection of tapes from the 80s and 90s. So uh, I threw something of that into the mix. So let's see how it goes. Now the first album that I want to show you, and many of you probably know it, uh, is Technodelic by YMO or uh, the Yellow Magic Orchestra. Now this is a beautiful cover design. I always like this this style, the atmosphere of the of this picture. And um, but mostly it is a really a wonderful album. YMO have been a pioneering band in the late 70s, early 80s in terms of electronic music and sampling music. And I think this album presents uh, their efforts to use sampling technology uh, probably the best. It's, it's, it's really a great album. Here's the backside. A nice photo of some kind of a uh, futuristic technology. There's also a Nice booklet inside. Now this is a Dutch pressing from uh, the year of the release, from 1981. Um, here you can see another nice photo. It's kind of supposed to look like some instruments from the future. It's probably, there's probably nothing to do with music in these photos. So, uh, I really like that one. But I've been always a big YMO fan. Now the other album is something completely different. It's this one. This is a joint project, so each side of the of the vinyl is one band. It is a collaboration between Current 93 and Death in June. The album actually has no name, but uh, in the circles of their fans it is called 1888 because of the backside. Or it is photograph, and uh, you can see there is an 1888 on the shield in the hands of this statue. So this is a gatefold sleeve, really nicely done with 
two photos of the band. So you can see her current. Uh, standing in the stairway. And uh, it's usually a rather peculiar picture of death in June. Really awkward. So this is, uh, today it's called Neo Folk. It's a really uh, folky style, but uh, really minor chord based and, uh, uh, well, one could call it gloomy. Um, there's a lot of melancholy. I mean, this is not the kind of music I would listen all the time, but, uh, well, it, it uh, has a certain fascination about it. It's a unique atmosphere. So, uh, next step would be uh, maybe an EP. You know, this one is really wonderful. This is uh, Diamanda Galas, You Must Be Certain of the Devil. Another example of a wonderful cover design. Now, Diamanda Galas is a really a great voice. It's a great vocalist. and, and uh, um, It has double barrel prayer on it, which is a wonderful composition. Yeah, and you must. I mean, this is this is not for the faint-hearted, certainly, um, but it's a uh, it's a unique attitude and a and a great uh, intense approach to music. So give it a try. Don't go crazy while doing it. <laughs> so uh, what about twelve inches? Now maybe something from the eighties. Stan Ridgeway, camouflage. It's a good song. It's from the Big Heat album. As you can see here in the picture. So Stan Ridgeway in the 80s. Or Inner City, Big Fun. It's another 12 inch. This time from Detroit. This is of course Kevin Saunderson, one of the pioneers of the of the Detroit techno movement. So this got to be like 19, yeah, 1988, that's what I thought. Not bad. So, um, what about, what about 7 inches? Yeah, I have, uh, this one is rather funny. This is a 7 inch by Paul Hartcastle, 19, but a German version. So I should rather say 19. <laughs> I don't know if this is worth something or... Uh, or not so rare. I never checked that. Now the next 7 inch uh, is an interesting thing. This is Hydrophobia by Contagious Orgasm. And this came out in the mid 90s by the label Anzen, which I shortly was involved in. Um, this is another case of uh, design, stylish design by Salt. Salt is the main the major designer in Anzen and uh, he does these wonderful packages of course limited and numbered and mint condition in this case all right uh, oh yeah I brought a tape as I said I have some really peculiar tapes Oh, well, this one is really old um, this tape here is the Mersbau tour um, in Netherlands the Dutch tour. Um, it was uh, designed and produced by Franz de Waard. Franz de Waard is a, really a pioneer that uh, did a lot of projects in the 80s and 90s and, uh, uh, and had a really uh, prolific label for uh, industrial music and uh, also ambient music. Actually he, he uh, put out um, most of the CDs of one of my favorite bands, Oyukai Conjugate. But uh, this is, of course, pure Japanese industrial noise. If you open the box, so we have these uh, two tapes here, but also there is a contact microphone built into the box. So the idea is you can play the tape, but also uh, if you have an amplifier, you can sort of go out of the from the contact microphone with an amplifier and you can scream <laughs> into the into the package and add your own layer of noise to the recording. But 
much later I realized that since it's the same principle, you can also run the tape through a tape player and uh, then go out with a cable here and it turns into a loudspeaker of sorts. Sounds really strange. But that's what you do. You try crazy stuff out. This was from 1989. So I think it came out maybe 90, but maybe already in 89. A really unique. So, now finally, um, CDs usually not so charming uh, compared with vinyl, but there are a few exceptions that are worth to be mentioned. So I brought one example. Um, I'm talking about BTTB by Ryuichi Sakamoto. So this came out as a regular CD as well. But this limited edition, if you open it, so um, here you have the CD with the album, and here there is a floppy disk with uh, the MIDI files of the album. So if you uh, had a, or have a computer working with MIDI files um, with a music software, you can basically load it and you can sort of see the, the MIDI events of Ruichi playing the piano or the keyboard. And yes, um, on, on this side, those are loose sheets. Oops, well, let me take it out. Those are loose sheets um, with the music from the album. For those who play piano. It's mostly piano music, sort of expressionistic music, quite influenced by Eric Satie, I would say. But there are some really nice uh, experimental tracks on it with sort of a prepared piano. So uh, that's a really nice album. That's actually all, but I see one more that I picked here. It's a, it's an 10 inch. And it's a 10 inch from Japan. And uh, it's called Neon Minyo Venshu. And uh, I don't speak Japan, but I kind of could pick some pieces uh, of the track names just to realize that this is a, this is a. Um, well, it's uh, it's it's traditional Japanese music, but it's a compilation, sort of uh, surrounding the theme of uh, old martial tunes. So basically, it's a, it's an album about samurai, <laughs> as the title cover suggests. It comes uh, with a nice sheet here, which I of course cannot decipher. But it, for example, it tells you like uh, it's there's a little map where you can see in which regions the song, the tune comes from. And awkwardly enough, I found a letter inside of this. Because this is a typical flea market purchase somehow, right? And uh, so uh, I bought this a long time ago and there was this letter inside in German. I don't know if this is a letter from 80s or 70s, uh, there's no date. Um, but uh, if you like, I can translate it quickly. So the letter says, my dear mom, this is a Japanese record with different folky tunes. For our ear, maybe a little bit difficult. Some would even call it toothache music. But I kind of got used to it. Some of it actually I like. Kisses, yo, bird. Well, that's sweet. Giving uh, your mom a record with traditional Japanese music. Uh, it doesn't sound that bad. I uh, don't think it's too take music, but I understand that uh, for some this might take a while to get used to. Well, it's an interesting record. I like it. So um, that's it for now. I hope you liked it and uh, I really hope you could uh, understand what I'm saying. Remember this is the very first time I've been doing this in English. Um, so. Uh, be kind. Rewind. See you.